Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for... Ooh, what day is it for? It's for the uh, 14th, September 14th, Wednesday, 2022. Got a little lost there, dear friends. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church, and this is coming to you from my office in that church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And today I have three passages of scripture to read for you, uh, a psalm, which is repeated for a few days because it's a, a meditative uh, idea, and then uh, an Old Testament and a New Testament passage, and a short devotional. So let's begin with Psalm 94. O Lord, God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, repay the proud what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? They pour out their arrogant words, all the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. And they say the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of the people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law to give him rest from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought, my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those whose frame, whose, who frame injustice by statute? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. He will bring back on them their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord, our God, will wipe them out. And now from our semi-continuous reading in the Old Testament of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 14, verses 1 to 10, and then verses 17 to 22. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns, and her gates languish. Her people lament on the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem goes up. Her nobles send their servants for water. They come to the cisterns. They find no water. They return with their vessels empty. They are ashamed and confounded and cover their heads. Because of the ground that is dismayed, since there is no rain on the land, the farmers are ashamed they cover their heads. Even the doe in the field forsakes her newborn fawn because there is no grass. The wild donkeys stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail because there is no vegetation. Though our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. O you hope of Israel, its Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for a night? Why should you be like a man confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot save? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not leave us. 
Thus says the Lord concerning his people, They have loved to wander thus. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. You shall say to them this word, Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is shattered with a great wound, with a very grievous blow. If I go out into the field, behold, those pierced by the sword. And if I enter the city, behold, the diseases of famine. For both prophet and priest ply their trade through the land and have no knowledge. Have you utterly rejected Judah? Does your soul loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We looked for peace, but no good came for a time of healing, but behold, terror. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Are there any among the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Are you not he, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for you do all these things. And now the gospel according to Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 to 33, and verses 54 to 62. Jesus is speaking. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demands to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your family may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard they and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This, this man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised for the good and gracious and generous provision of it to us. And Lord, we pray that you would grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability not only to hear your word, but to understand it, to have it enter into our minds, into our hearts, into our very souls, and therein work what is good and pleasing to your will. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers' classic daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest, we read the entry for September 14th entitled Imagination versus Inspiration. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. The second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. <coughs> Pardon me. Simplicity is the secret of seeing things clearly. A saint does not think clearly for a long while, but a saint ought to see clearly without any difficulty. You cannot think a spiritual muddle clear. 
you have to obey it clear. In intellectual matters, you can think things out, but in spiritual matters, you will think yourself into cotton wool. If there is something upon which God has put his pressure, obey in that matter. Bring your imagination into captivity to the obedience of Christ with regard to it, and everything will become as clear as daylight. The reasoning capacity comes afterwards. But we never see along that line. We see like children when we try to be wise, and we see nothing. At that time, Jesus says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. The tiniest thing we allow in our lives that is not under the control of the Holy Spirit is quite sufficient to account for spiritual muddle and all the thinking we are like to spend on it will never make it clear. Spiritual muddle is only made plain by obedience. Immediately we obey, we discern. This is humiliating because when we are muddled we know the reason is in the temper of our mind. When the natural power of vision is devoted to the Holy Spirit it becomes the power of perceiving God's will and the whole life is kept in simplicity. Almighty Father God, we seek a simple faith, a childlike faith, a truth that allows us to see the world through the lens, through the eyes of your Son and to see it simply that there is either you and being for you and following you and obeying you or there is rebellion and there is no gray ground in between there are no half measures there are no partial commitments we either wholly belong to you or we are wholly in rebellion against you bring us into alignment with your will lord bring us into alignment with your holy spirit may our devotion be devoted to you and you alone and therein may it be simple enough that we do not need to debate it. We simply need to obey and see the truth come like a clearing, cleansing light in our lives. To your glory we pray, Almighty Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon returning King. Amen. Well, friends, I thank you for spending a bit of time listening to scripture today and being with me through to the end. And until we are able to be together again to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom.